You have a talk that looks at managing complexity in long-lived distributed systems. How does a new distributed system differ from a more mature or established system? Um, with new systems, you're having to make a lot of decisions kind of on a blank slate of exactly how you're going to deploy things and try to plan ahead and all of those kinds of things. And it's, it's really easy, I think, to get kind of caught up in making all of the exactly right decisions. Right. But the truth is you're really just going to start from somewhere. So I think it's usually best just to kind of get started with something that's small and meets your needs and then kind of adapt over time. Um, but with a new system, too, you have like a potentially the opportunity to start without the legacy of the past, which is, it's nice, um, but sometimes it can be really paralyzing. So I think, that, like, to some degree, it can be a gift to have something to work with sure. because you already know what your problems are and what you need to fix. Um, with a new system, you know, you're kind of just taking a stab in the dark and hoping for the best. That's interesting because sometimes when, I, when I've talked to other people about starting from scratch, they sort of enjoy being unencumbered by the past, but you're talking about some of those lessons can actually be useful. They can be really useful, right, because it informs you as to what problems you're trying to solve. Right. And, you know, it can be really fun to just kind of start something and see where it goes. And some people, I think, get really energized by that. Um, personally, I'm kind of a fixer. So, I, like, I like starting new things as mm -hmm. well, but I love solving problems that, you know, that are real problems that I know are important that, you know, we're already sort of suffering from. Um, so I think it's just kind of a little bit about, like, my profile, too. <laughs> what are the biggest risks that distributed systems face as they mature? I mean, complexity is really a big one, right? Um, ideally, if things are going well, you're getting massive growth, and massive growth always means that you know, you're leaving some details by the wayside, you're making some compromises. Um, I think it's often really hard for organizations that are scaling quickly to find time mm. to manage complexity in their systems. And that can be really a trap because if you're really always just like focused on the next deadline or whatever and never planning for what you're going to live with when sure. you're done, um, then you might never find the time. It's not like, you know, one day all the launches are going to stop and then you're going to take a step back and be like, okay, time to clean up. Right. Like you really have to kind of get into an ongoing practice of just kind of like taking care of some of the overhead and building that time into people's schedules. I wanted to ask you a little bit about that because how is it that you can make sure that complexity doesn't become the only thing that you address? Yeah, I think it's really important to keep uh, keep sort of balance and focus on that because you really don't want to spend all of your time kind of optimizing or making sure that things are really easy to take care of. Like, I think it's really important to think about what the system is supposed to do. You know, if you're not launching things, like that's kind of a bad sign. Sure. Um, if you're not getting changes out into the environment, that's kind of a bad sign. I think it's really important to kind of stay plugged in to whether or not like you're actually getting any work done. Um, I actually kind of have a practice for myself, and I advise my tech leads to do this as well, of taking a little bit of time um, on a fairly regular basis, like every week or so, mm -hmm. maybe you know every couple of weeks, a little more time, um, and just kind of thinking about like the extent to which you're dealing with overhead versus you know building what you're supposed to be building or enabling what you're supposed to be enabling or shipping what you're supposed to be shipping. Right. And if the balance is too high on the side of overhead, then you either need to account, you know, adjust how you're accounting for your time or what you're spending your time on, or potentially just consider investments that are short-term that might drop it. But you really, you really do need to stay focused on like actually getting stuff in front of users, I think, because otherwise you're just not doing your job right. What are the key tools of distributed systems? Um, I think it's really easy to kind of get stuck on individual tools or individual systems. Um, they're kind of evolving all mm. of the time. Um, but in general, monitoring is a really big one. Like, you must understand what your system is doing. Right. Um, you know, you can only optimize what you pay attention to. And so if you're not, if you can't see what your system is doing, if you can't see whether it's working, like, it's not working. Um, monitoring, automation, um, and I think in general, the more you can get away from managing individual systems to the extent that that's possible and start dealing with kind of layers of software, um, that can be a really big accelerator to growth. And that's kind of like the, the principle that distributed systems are really based on is the idea that you can cheaply have a bunch of different pieces that are working together well. Right. Now, I read in your bio that you were basically on call for Google.com for yeah. five years. Yeah. What, what was that like? I mean, what kinds of things were you addressing? Um, it's kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> it was really easy to explain what I did at yeah, the time. Sure. Um, much easier than any other job I've ever held because <laughs> I could just ask people, like, oh, like, when you go to Google, is it up? And they would say, yeah, it's up. And then I would say, like, that's what I do. <laughs> so it was very cool because, like, I got to talk about something that was really visible and yeah. really sort of well-respected, and that was a lot of fun. 
Um, but like the, those on-call rotations are no joke. It's a three-minute uh, SLA. It's basically like two minutes to tie to act. Uh, three to five minutes to be typing, depending on how the rotation is set up. Yikes. So like you put your life on hold yeah, when I you're imagine. when you're on call. Yeah. Um, like you, you take the pager to you, take, you take you like you bring your laptop into the shower and like sit it on the counter. Wow. Like, you, know, you you don't go shopping. You don't go to dinner. You don't go to a movie. Like yeah. you are chained to that thing during your shift. And how long are the rotations? Um, they're usually it, it varies depending on the teams. The teams can kind of set it up the way that they prefer. Yeah. Um, when I was doing it, it was 16 hours in Mountain View and eight in Dublin, um, and it would be Monday through Thursday or Friday through Sunday. Um, these days, most teams do 12 and 12 between yeah. a local site and another site that's covering nights, and that's actually a lot easier on you. <laughs> but like, I used to get paged awake at two in the morning, and you, know, you go, you kind of go from like zero to a hundred to like Google is down. Um, and, and Zero that's like, to Google is down. I like that. <laughs> that, yes. that. That's kind of a lot to wake up to. That's, yeah, yeah, that's that's a rush. Uh, last question for you. What people or projects are you tracking these days? Um, so I was, uh, for the last couple of years, I was working in the cloud org within Google. So that was kind of fun because I got to pay a lot more attention to what was going on outside of Google. And I think sometimes it's really easy to kind of get very insular when you're working at a big company like Google and mostly just think about projects internally and what people are doing internally. Um, so cloud is kind of a nice opportunity to see what people were doing in the broader ecosystem and kind of get, get a little bit more involved in that, sort of talk to people. Um, I was dealing with the service management space um, and things like you know config management and deployment and stuff like that. Um, so we got to pay a lot of attention to things like Chef and Puppet and Salt and so forth. Um, there's been a lot of excitement about Docker in the last few years, and like Google's done a bunch of work with that stuff. Um, so it's kind of hard to avoid paying attention to it. Um, and then I think that really all of the stuff that's in the kind of um, compute management space is really interesting because it, it's sort of one of the fundamental shifts in the way that computing works when you get away from like managing an OS, managing machine, managing a BIOS, managing hardware towards just like managing the thing that you want to do with it. Interesting. Um, it's yeah. profoundly empowering. It's really cool. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Cool.